Hello guys, for this video we'll be discussing about the respondents of our study with sample size calculation. Tawad population in sample size, this subsection briefly describes the people who participated in the study, their demographic characteristics including the percentage by variables and categories, location, setting during data gathering, sample size and response rate, the sampling technique used in recruiting participants and other relevant information such as agreements on obtaining informed consent. So we have the title or subsection population and sample size, but in our new research format, the subsection now is known as the respondents. So for example, we have the title peer pressure and academic performance of ABM students. The population and sample size, or in our case, the respondents section, the respondents of the study were the 102 grade 12 ABM students in VMA Global College Engineering Centers Incorporated during the second semester of academic year 2019-2020. The researchers used stratified random sampling technique in getting the respondents. So as you can see, we have the respondents or the participants of our study the locale where the study happened or the location where we conduct the study and that's our school, the Miguel College and at the same time the academic year that it happens and the semester when our survey took place. And it is also mentioned here the type of sampling technique that we use and in this case stratified random sampling. So first we discuss the probability sampling and the non-probability sampling to know more about our sampling techniques. The top of probability sampling refers to the selection of a sample from a population when this selection is based on the principle of randomization, that is random selection or chance. So everybody in that particular population has an equal chance to be selected in the process and to participate in our survey or in our study, that is probability. So as much as possible, top of probability, this also eliminates the bias since we don't know who will participate in our study. We are just picking them randomly. So there are different types of probability sampling. The first one is our simple random sampling. Simple random sampling is a type of probability sampling in which the researcher randomly selects a subset of participants from a population. Each member of the population has an equal chance to be selected. So talk about simple random sampling cases would be lottery method or the draw lots method. Those are the common techniques for simple random sampling. On the other hand, the talk about systematic random sampling still is a probability sampling method where researchers select members of the population at a regular interval. Say for example, you pick a number, for example, in this case, five, so the first person to be selected in the study will be the number five participants. And in every fifth interval, those will be selected to participate in our survey. So that means multiples of five. We start with the fifth person, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th, the 25th, and so on and so forth. And the regular interval in this case would be five. That's the name, systematic random sampling. Stratified random sampling is a method of sampling that involves the division of a population into smaller subgroups known as strata. Say, for example, we have per section or per year level. So those are stratified random sampling. This is what is in common use in our research study, the stratified random sampling, but not all the case or not all the time. We use this one, but usually in our institution, we use a stratified random sampling. The next sampling technique under probability is our cluster sampling. You divide the population into clusters, such as districts or schools, and then randomly select some of these clusters as your sample. Say, for example, we classify them as districts. Say, in Bacolod, depth ed, we have seven districts, district one up until district seven. And then out of these districts, we just select one or two district or three district to participate in our survey. And out of those clusters, 
we just randomly pick the school that needs to participate in our survey. And that is what you call as our cluster sampling. We usually do this for a wider range of population size. The next type of probability is, or the next type of sampling is a non-probability. It is defined as a sampling technique in which the researcher selects samples based on subjective judgment of the researcher rather than random selection. Take note, subjective. So there is bias. While in the, in the probability sampling, everyone has an equal chance to be selected. In the non-probability sampling, these are based from the decision of the researcher. Thus, there is a, an instance wherein it will have subjective approach or judgment in this particular technique. Some of these techniques would be the purposive sampling, a non-probability sampling technique in which the sample members are chosen only on the basis of the researcher's knowledge and judgment. Purposive. We set criteria for this particular type of probability or non-probability sampling. Say, for example, all instructors, instructors who are currently teaching that particular subject will be surveyed in this particular study that is purposive. Next would be quota. Researchers create a sample involving individuals that represent a population. Researchers choose these individuals according to specific traits or qualities. Say, for example, uh, you're able to reach a certain number of in your study, then you already reach your sampling size. That is quota sampling. Snowball method, samples of traits that are rare to find. This is a sampling technique in which existing subjects provide referrals to recruit samples required for a research study. For example, we're looking for seafarers. So to make our life easier as researchers, these seafarer that we're able to interview or to survey would actually refer his or her friends to do the same survey. Thus, it will be easier for us and it will be a lot faster for us to reach our goal or sample size. That is your snowball method. Convenience method, on the other hand, is adopted by researchers where they collect market research data from a conveniently available pool of respondents. Take note, conveniently available. Say, for example, the researcher decided to conduct a survey for all users of telephone. So therefore, those who do not have telephone will not participate in the survey. There is lack of um, generalization out of it because um, the insights of those who don't have cell phone or phones will not be gathered by our researcher. That's the name, convenient something, meaning um, the participants will only be those who have cell phones or phones during that time. So that's the name, convenience sampling. Now, let's talk about sample size. Sample size is the number of completed responses your survey receives. It's called a sample because it only represents a part of a group of people for the target population whose opinions or behaviors you care about. So from a population to save us economically, both in our resources and our time, we need to trim down the number of people that we need to part to survey. So therefore, from a population, we get the sample size. In getting our sample size, traditional method would teach us to use the Slovens formula. And this is the Slovens formula. We have the n small, small n, which is our sample size is equal to capital N, which is our population size, divided by quantity 1 plus n, the population size, times e, which is our margin of error squared. This is the Slovens formula. n Sample size is equal to N, capital N, the population size divided by 1, plus N, population size E, margin of error squared. But nowadays, we also employ a much easier tool to solve for our sample size. And that would be our browser calculator, which I will be 
um, sharing with you later. Say, for example, we have this particular table. By the way, this is how we organize our distribution table in our respondents section of our research paper. Say, for example, we need to categorize our respondents based on their section. So we have here alpha to echo, and we have a total at the bottom. So we have the sample size, or sorry, the population size, 41 for alpha, 41 for bravo, 40 for Charlie, 41 for Delta, 29 for Echo. And if we sum this up, we have a total of 192 population size. So in this case, as we proceed, that population size is 192. And as what I've mentioned, we'll be using the Rouse of calculator to solve for our pop for our sample size. So in this case, um, you just search for rouseof.com sample size or rouse of sample cal sample size calculator, and you will arrive at this particular web page. So what margin of error can you accept? That's five percent. What confidence level do you need? So in our case, ninety-five percent. What is a population size? Now this time you need to enter the total earlier, which is 192. What is the response distribution? So we need to have a normal distribution, so 50%. So your recommended sample size is 129. That's so easy. So by the way, this 129 will automatically appear as long as these questions were answered correctly. And actually, you just need to key in 192 and never mind the rest you will have an answer of 129 so we now have our small n or the sample size which is 129 from one from 192 which is our total size population size we trim it down to 129 to save again time and also resources in printing out the questionnaire so let's complete the table. After finding for the sample size, you need to look for the percentage here at the third column or the fourth column starting from the section column. So let's solve for it. So usually we base it from the big N, the population size. So N, uh, I mean section, Population size divided by the total population size. That's 100 times 41 divided by 192. You will get an answer of 21.35%. It is already um, rounded up or rounded off. So in this case, that's um, in the second section, which is Bravo. 41 times 100 divided by 192 is equal to 21.35%. Same as with delta. For Charlie, that is 100 times 40 divided by 192, which is our population size, which is now the answer is 20.83%. And lastly, for echo, 100 times 29 divided by 192, which is our population size, is equal to 15.10%. And lastly, to solve for our sample size n here, small letter n, we multiply this to our sample size. Again, we multiply the percentage to our sample size, which is 129. So this is the case. So 129 times 21.35 percent. Remember, this is in percentage. We need to convert this one to decimal. So we just move two decimal places to the left. That's 129 times 0 0.2135. We have 27.54. That is the same with Bravo and also with Delta. And for Charlie, that's 129, the sample size, times 20.83, which is equal to 26.87. And lastly, for Echo, 129 times 15.10. That is 19.48. So these are our uh, rounded, uh, our values, exact values. However, you need to take note that for sample size, it should be 
discrete. So about discrete, it must have a step-by-step -step, uh, counting, natural numbers. So we need to round it up because there is no 0.5 or 0.87 number of people or number of persons. We need to round it up or round it off depending on our decision as researchers. So in this case, on the next slide, from 27.54, we need to round it up to 120. I mean, 27.54, we need to round it up to 28. The same is with Bravo. For Delta, I just decided to make it 27. Since if we'll try to make it 28, the total size will now be 130. So again, I decided to make it 27 uh, in order to reach our approximate sample size of 129 rather than pushing to with 130. For Charlie, that is 26.87, round it up to 27. And for Echo, that's 19.48, rounded off to 19. So if we'll try to solve for it, 28 plus 28 plus 27 plus 27 plus 19, you will arrive at a sample size of 129. And to make it clear for our readers, at the same time to our panelists, we need to put it in the table like this. So we now have the section. We now have the population size per section as well as, well as the total population size. We now have the small n or the, the sample size per section and also the sample size for our current study, which is 129. And as you can see here, it is also seen our different percentages, corresponding percentages per section that will participate in our survey. And don't forget the title of your table as table one, distribution table. That's it for our discussion on Respondents at the same time, the sampling techniques and the sample size. I hope you will apply your learnings here in our making of our research proposal, especially in the respondent section of our research methodology. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.